Hello and welcome to the Everything is Black and White podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button as there's plenty of great content coming your way throughout the summer and into the new season. And if you're watching on Facebook or through chroniclelive.co.uk, why not head over to YouTube and join us? There'll be plenty of exclusive content coming your way, including from the Tour of America, which Newcastle United set off to in July. My name is Andrew Musgrove and I'm bringing you the news today that Newcastle United have confirmed who is staying and who is going. And there's two names from the first team who are no longer Newcastle United players. One is Kieran Clark. We'll get on to Kieran Clark in just a moment. The other is Matty Longstaff. Yes, the young Jordy no longer part of this club. The club are helping him through though his rehab. He suffered a knee injury while on loan at Colchester and Newcastle United are helping him through that, which is great to see. But his contract is up. He's no longer on the books. And it's a real shame. I think everyone had a bit of a dream of him and his brother, Sean, marshalling the centre midfield roles at Newcastle United and leading Newcastle United to some sort of cup or European glory. But the dream is no longer. It's not going to happen. And he's really... Had a tough time of it, of course, burst onto the scene, didn't he? And scored two goals in that season, both against Manchester United, one at home in a 1-0 win, and then one down at Old Trafford, 4-1 defeat. And many people at his at that time thought he was better than his brother. A lot of people said that. A lot of people said Matty has the better ability and tipped Matty to make it ahead of Sean. Of course, Sean now flourishing under Eddie Howe. He's a key part of Eddie Howe's start in 11, and Newcastle do look weaker without him in the midfield. It's amazing to see how the tables have turned. And that's, I guess, the harsh reality of football. Where would Matty Longstaff be if it wasn't for injuries? Of course, after bursting onto the scene, there was all that kind of drama with his contract. He was linked to Watford. He was linked to moves uh, to Italy. Would he sign a new deal? Wouldn't he sign a new deal? Steve Bruce hadn't really played him. Took a lot of flack for it. Uh, but, you know, for whatever reason, just didn't fancy him in the team. A lot of fans wanted to see Matty Longstaff playing week in, week out. Perhaps Steve Bruce didn't feel he was ready for it. Eventually, he did sign a, a new deal and then he spent um, seasons out on loan. He was at Aberdeen, he was at Mansfield, and then he was at Colchester where he suffered a, a really bad knee injury. And you saw the two of the training ground last week with Shola Miobi and Matty Longstaff was in the pool, wasn't he? I'm going through some rehab and trying to work back to fitness. Unfortunately for him, it won't be at Newcastle United. 14 Premier League games he played for Newcastle United. He achieved, I guess, the dream that many boyhood Newcastle United fans will have. He, you know, playing Premier League football for the club is a massive achievement. And no one can take away those two goals he scored against Manchester United. Like I say, it'll just be a case of what if, really, because he had really good passing ability. He was good going forward. You would potentially argue better than his brother when it came to an attack and sense. Um, and it's just bad luck, I guess. Injuries have rocked them. And, you know, it's funny because if he'd been fitting and on the books, he may have played a part in Newcastle's season towards the end of it because they were decimated by injuries in midfield, weren't they? And there maybe would have been an opportunity for him. But the way it works, it just hasn't, hasn't worked for him. And how will he be feeling? I think he'll be he'll be good. Newcastle are on the up. Um, he'll be pleased to see his brother performing so well. But him not being part of this journey will hurt him, I guess. But look, he's 23 and we know this injury is bad. It's great to see the club working with him to make sure he can recover as soon and as best as possible. And he'll have a good career ahead of him. He might have to go down to League One, League Two and work his way back up. We've just seen... Owen Bailey, you know, released by the club uh, a few years back, moved to Gateshead, captain Gateshead, I believe. They've gone really well under Mike Williamson. He's just secured a move to Doncaster. We've seen Dan Barlaz I dropped down a few levels. He's now at Middlesbrough performing well. So, you know, there are routes back up if you've got the ability. And we just have to hope from Matty's point of view that he can work back to fitness. And um, yeah, you know, we will see the best of him in the years to come. So good luck to Matty Longstaff uh, and the club have wished him well. Other one, Kieran Clark, as expected. I don't think anyone's surprised that Kieran Clark is no longer a Newcastle United player. Spent last season out on loan at Sheffield United, 10 appearances. There was an option for Sheffield United to make him a player permanently. They've obviously been promoted to the Premier League. They haven't taken that up as of yet. So it's going to be interesting to see where he 
does indeed go. Signed from Aston Villa in 2016, became a major part of that championship winning side under Rafa Benitez, and then didn't really get into the team too much. He did have a bit of a resurgence under Steve Bruce, the 2020-21 season, 22 appearances. Uh, the COVID season, wasn't it? He looked probably the most assured centre-back, I think. And um, he had, had signed a new deal in 2021 as well. He did look decent enough. Um, never a world beater, but he, in that season in particular, he looked quite good. And then off to Sheffield United, as we've mentioned there. But I probably most remembered for getting sent off against Norwich and then Joe Linton being moved into a, a centre-mid centre mid position and, and becoming this force we know of him. That's what Newcastle United fans will probably thank you and Clark for, um, allowing or finding Joe Linton as a as a midfield enforcer. 127 appearances in all competitions. A decent servant. Played key roles at times. Never the best centre-back in the world, but I don't think he could ever fault his commitment and effort to the cause at Newcastle United. And I think he'll be fondly remembered you know but he won't be he won't have a a, a a legendary status will he at all so good luck to him and it'll be interesting to see where he ends up interestingly some players have been offered extensions now the big one for me is Matt Ritchie the extension on his contract has been triggered Eddie Howe was very clear he wanted to keep him at the club he's done that for me that is massive I know People watching this will say, well, he doesn't play that often. He's just going to take up another place in the in the squad. But his experience, I think, is what Eddie Howe is after here. You know, next season is going to be a brand new experience to a lot of players, including Matt Ritchie. He's now played European football, has he? But he's got that experience and wise head on, head on him that you can put an arm around the shoulder of the younger players who might get swept away in the in the occasion i think matt ritchie is going to be key on keeping people grounded making sure that the levels are as high as possible because he sets his own levels so high and everyone's got to match them not entirely uh, easy to do but he's going to be brilliant brilliant to pass on experience to the younger kids as well and i really do hope he becomes a coach at newcastle United in time because i think he would be brilliant really really would be and we've Heard about this leadership group, and he's key in that. He is key uh, for the the development of the youngsters, the likes of Elliot Anson and, and and others. I think it's a really good move to trigger that extension and to keep him on Tyne's side. Dan Burns got a, a, another um, year on his contract after reaching a threshold of appearances. Brilliant season for him last season. Um, so he's going to be potentially staying for twelve months. Uh, further than the initial contract he signed after a move from Brighton. Gillespie's had his contract extended as well. And offers have been made to Paul Dummett and Luis Carriers. I think Paul Dummett will stay. He's not going to want to go when the club are about to face, you know, potentially Real Madrid, AC Milan. The interesting one is Luis Carriers. If you were listening to the Monday show with me and Aaron, we both agreed we'd like him to stop. Personal reasons suggest he might go back to Italy. I think his partner is pregnant. She wants him back there. So it's going to be interesting. What does he want to do? He's fitted in the group really well. He's a very capable third-choice goalkeeper. Obviously thrown into the cup final. Wasn't at fault for either goals. He's just a very good professional. You know what you're getting with him. He knows he's not going to be playing first-team football. He seems quite happy with that. But what you get with him is a top-level performance and training, which means Martin Dubravka, Nick Pope have to be at their very best because... Luis Carriers, whose third choice is, and the same with Mark Gillespie as well. So they've got a good group there. And I'd like to see Carries take up the, the offer that's been extended to him. I say Paul Dummett will stay, won't he? Uh Chris Wood confirmed he's off to he's you know he's a Nottingham Forest player now. Into the kind of the under 23s and under uh 21 group, and there have been some offers made to players, and there have been some players let go go as well. Uh, leaving the club, Harry Barkley, Niall Brookwell, Dan Langley, Joe Oliver, Josh Stewart and Isaac Westendorf. Now, I think the names that stand out there, probably Brookwell, Langley and Westendorf, the striker. You know, tip for big things. Some of these players, unfortunately, haven't made the cut. That is the brutal reality of, of football. And, it, you know, it is harsh and we wish them all the best as well. Yeah, Newcastle United have activated options to extend the stays of 
Amadario Diallo, who was really impressed. He's captained uh, their 23s at, at certain points as well. Michael Andini, the striker, he um, has been offered a new deal as well. Um, offers have, uh, sorry, Andini's actually had his, ex- his stay extended. Offers have been made to Will Brown, Nathan Carlisle, Kyle Crossley, James Suntley, Jamie Miley, and Josh Scott. So some big names in there who have been tipped for big things. So they have had offers made to them. At under 18 level, you've got second year scholars, Ben Parkinson and Kieran Thompson have agreed professional contracts, while Eden Page is taking the option of a third year scholarship as he continues his recovery from a long-term injury. Uh, some will depart. Bew Beresford, Steve Besson, Lewis Cooper, Callum McNally and Nathan and Cuckoo will depart the academy this summer. And the club say they thank all the players leaving St. James Park for their efforts and wish them every success for the future. So there you go. We've been waiting for this. Uh, I think Newcastle are one of the last clubs to announce their retain list. <sighs> No surprises. I don't think there are any surprises, really. Kieran Clark was always going to go. There was a bit of discussion whether you keep Matty Longstaff on, you offer him a new deal, you get him through the next gen, see where the line lies. But it probably makes sense, actually, to let him go. But good to see the club making sure he's going to get through his recovery and set him up well on his future. I like that. That's a nice little care package. Yes. It's really good to good to see. Um, and yeah, I say Matt Ritchie get an extension. Brilliant. Paul Dummer offered one. You think he'll accept. Love carriers to stay. Think they've got a really good group there. Again, what, what can you say? No surprises, I don't think. And yeah, we'll be interesting to see now who's added to the squad. That's what we're all about now. The transfer window. Will it be James Madison? Will it be Tyler Adams? We will wait and see. We've got a dedicated transfer live blog on chroniclive.co.uk. So head over there. Keep up to date with all that. Hit subscribe on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your week.